Welcome to this virtual program with Ottawa County Parks. I'm Curtis Dykstra, Parks Naturalist from the Nature Center at Hemlock Crossing County Park. Today we'll be learning all about woodcocks as we explore their world through this presentation. Woodcocks belong to the order Caradriaformis, which includes all shorebirds. When we think of shorebirds, we may think of birds like these sanderlings on the shores of Lake Michigan, not a woodcock. Regardless, they are considered a shorebird, just not one that likes the shore, but would rather hang out in, you guessed it, the woods. In fact, in Old English, the common name woodcock literally means little chicken of the woods, or in another translation, woodland bird easily caught. Other common names for woodcock include timberdoodle, bog sucker, labrador twister, and brush or wood snipe. There are eight species in the genus Scolopax, ranging around the world from Europe, Asia, Indonesia, and North America. The Latin name Scolopax minor literally means lesser woodcock in Latin, and the Greek word used for Scolopax is Ascolopus, again translating directly as woodcock. In researching this, I wasn't fully satisfied with this dead end, so I kept digging. What I turned up is speculative, but interesting nonetheless. If you stretch things a bit and break down the Greek word Ascolopus, you can come up with two possible root words, scoliopos, meaning skew-eyed, or scallops, meaning dig base. Now we're talking. Why not combine them and make skew-eyed dig base? I like it. But what does this have to do with a woodcock? Let's find out. If we're calling woodcocks skew-eyed, just what is their vision like? Well, their eyes are large and positioned very high on their heads as the picture on the left shows. This allows a woodcock bubble vision in every direction around itself. That means 360 degrees around and everything above it too. The image on the right shows their visual range including areas where they have depth perception both in front and behind itself. You can about imagine if a baseball pitcher had woodcock vision. They'd be able to see all base runners, the batter, the outfield, and even a fly ball overhead, all without moving its head. This amazing adaptation allows woodcocks to keep an eye out for predators while hiding on the forest floor, or even when foraging with its face in the dirt. We'll explore that next. Woodcocks do forage with their faces in the dirt, as this picture shows. Just what are they foraging for, and how do their long beaks pull it out of the dirt? Their beaks probe in the moist soil for worms, grubs, and other invertebrates that live below the surface. The tip of their top beak is flexible, allowing them to grasp worms like a pair of fingers. Just look at this woodcock's dirty face. So just how do these dig bases locate worms, like the ones seen in his beak, under the ground? Let's take a look. Woodcocks have a little shuffle that they perform while foraging. They step forward and rock their bodies forward and backward before taking another step and repeat the rocking. At first glance, this seems odd and perhaps unnecessary. But as they shift their weight from one foot to the other, it is thought that the vibrations that are produced elicit worms to move underground. These movements may be heard or felt by the woodcock, allowing them to target their prey. Now that we know a bit about their name and related adaptations and behaviors, let's take a look at their range and habitat. The American woodcock is a resident of eastern North America, 
breeding from as far south as the southeastern U.S. and north all the way into Canada. During the winter, they remain resident in the southeast, as indicated by the purple area of the map, and are joined by their northern counterparts, as indicated by the red portion of the map. Wintering birds can be found as far south as southern Florida and the Gulf Coast, as indicated by the blue areas of the map. This map shows abundance of woodcocks during the breeding season. The brighter areas indicate higher concentrations. The highest breeding concentrations are in the northeastern U.S., down through the Appalachian Mountains and Ohio River Valley. Now let's take a look at what habitats they prefer within their range. Low, moist thickets with leaf cover is the typical ideal daytime foraging habitat for woodcocks. The moist soil makes it easier for them to probe in the soil with their beaks. The thicker, the better. These birds don't make it easy to find them. Woodcock hunters will attest to this fact. If it weren't for his blaze orange, this hunter might be hard to see. Can you find his dog? Woodcocks are masters of camouflage in this habitat. Let's see if you can find them in the following slides. Take a close look. Do you see it? I'll give you to the count of three before I reveal it. Ready? One, two, three. There it is. Here's another to find. Ready? One, two, three. There it is. As day turns to night, woodcocks move to a different habitat for a different purpose. They make their way to nearby forest openings and meadows where, unlike during the day when they want to be hidden, they actually want to be found. Not by you and me, obviously, but males want to be found by females. This is where male woodcocks perform an odd ritual every night in early spring. Let's take a look. After making their way into the meadow, as the sun goes down, males puff up their chests and belt out a nasally beep to alert others of their presence. They often rotate their bodies between calls to project it in other directions. This can cause confusion when trying to locate one by sound, as they can sound close one moment and then suddenly further away. All the while, they do not change their distance from you. Listen as I play the painting call of the woodcock. When confronting rivals in prime display areas, males have an odd-sounding aggression call. I call it the alien sound. What do you think it sounds like? After a few bouts of calls, the male will take to the sky in a twittering flight. The twittering sound is created by the three shorter outer wing feathers as they vibrate against the air. The woodcock rockets 100 to 300 feet in the air and begins to circle in a wide spiral. As he descends, the woodcock zigzags back and forth, chirping on his way before silently landing again. 
They often land near their previous calling locations in hopes that a female has heard them and silently come into the field to mate with him. Listen to the recording and see if you can hear both the twittering and chirping sounds made during his display. After mating, females are left to nest without the aid of males. For building their nests, female woodcock prefer young and mixed-aged forest thickets that provide lots of cover and are dry, but near to adequately moist feeding areas. In building a nest, females only create a shallow depression directly on the leaf litter on the forest floor. They lay one to five eggs and incubate them for three weeks. All the while, she depends on her camouflage to keep safe from predators. However, if threatened, she will flush from the nest, feigning injury to distract potential predators away from the nest. If disturbed early on in incubation, they may even abandon the nest and try again elsewhere. After hatching, nestlings are only brooded by their mother until they are dry. They hatch well developed, covered with downy feathers, and able to run almost immediately. They must leave the nest only a few hours after hatching. The female feeds them for the first week, but they begin probing for food on their own within the first few days. After a month with mom, they become independent and lead a solitary life. In 2015, while photographing wild lupine flowers, I stumbled upon a nest in the meadow at Hemlock Crossing County Park. Can you see the female hidden on the nest in the grass? Here's a closer look. Now, in this picture, can you locate the nest and eggs? Here's a closer look. I periodically checked on the nest from a distance until one day the female, and presumably the chicks which I never did see, all disappeared. So now you might be wondering where you could observe woodcocks. Here are some suggestions. At Grand River Park, you can find them in the meadow a short walk from the picnic area parking lot. At Crockery Creek Natural Area, listen for them from the parking area. At Upper Makatawa Natural Area, they can be found in the meadow along the paved pathway at the 84th Street entrance. And, of course, at Hemlock Crossing County Park, in front of the Nature Center in the meadow. Or, maybe you can find some habitat near you and have the adventure of finding your own. Let us know about it. We'd love to hear about your adventure. Thank you for tuning in to All About Woodcocks. I hope you enjoyed the program and that you're now eager to get outside and find one yourself. Please tune in again with us in the future. Thank you.